Proverbs, three, Proverbs 8. Proverbs 8. Yeah. Proverbs 8. Proverbs 8. 8, 8, 8. Verse 13, the fear of the Lord, the fear of the Lord, say the fear of the Lord. The fear of the Lord Lord is to hate evil, hate evil. Now I don't, remember I said I got that word out of my vocabulary and it come to hate, especially this, I I, I hate when this happens. So it's saying this, when that happens and I develop this hate. And uh, so in me, I got rid of that hate. I did the best I could to get rid of it. But there are certain things like this when it comes to the word hate, despised greatly, to not have an appetite, a palate, not having a desire for anything other than what God wants. The fear of the Lord. What is fear? I'm afraid of God. Oh, you know, one time I was afraid of God. I was because God was preached to me as a man with a big stick. And if you did something wrong, he's going to get you for it or he's going to get your children for it. He'll get a grandchild for it. He'll, he'll, he'll get you back. And as if, you know, God is uh, not a good God. But let me tell you, God is a good God and God is a wholesome God. And, uh, and the truth about it is this fear deals with reverency. I reverence my God. I reverence God. The reverence, the reverential fear, let me put it that way. The reverential fear of the Lord is to hate evil, pride and arrogancy and the evil way and the perverse mouth I hate. Now, these are things that are just not right. The Bible says also in Proverbs, I don't want to go over there and read it. He said six things he hates, seven are abomination. And two of them right away deals with your mouth, perverse lips, fast to bear tails, different things. Now, the truth is we have to love what God loves. You have got to really, you have to really develop a real passion for the things that God loves. You have to. What, what is it that God loves? Matter of fact, the Bible said God loves the assembling of his, the, the assembling of his people together. God loves that. He dwells in the presence of praise and worship. God comes in. Uh, There's things that God loves and there's things that displeases God. Now, the truth is, I know what moves God. I I really do. I know what moves God. Compassion, heart, love. Not being perfect. I've been saying that over and over again because... People get this condemnation because they've messed up. They're not perfect. No, it's not being perfect. It's being right of heart. It's being right of heart. Someone was here today and had been for a while. And I went, I stand out there when they came in and they went like, I know I haven't been here for a long time. I said, no, 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 no. We don't do that here. We're just so thankful that you're here. There's no condemnation. There's no shame. I mean, we're just thankful that you're here. We're not concerned about the wise. We're thankful that you're here. Amen. The truth is the enemy works on condemnation and shame immediately. That's why when you mess up, instead of, instead of experiencing the love of God, the, con, the convicting love of God, people get the, this, uh, this condemnation upon them. Now, I really believe in my heart, if you do something wrong, you need something to get you right. You got to have something. Uh, people saying, you know, no one should ever feel condemned about anything. Folks, if people didn't feel condemned of something, they'd never turn their heart and get right. Amen. But when it comes to you walking with God, it ought to be just this convicting thing of God that brings you back into the right position. Amen. If you never felt wrong for your sin, why would you ever want to repent? That's right. Amen. That's right. Amen. If you never felt wrong for doing things wrong, why would you repent? If, if when you got mad and you re- let your mouth run off and you your words begin to cut people and hurt people, if you don't walk away later that evening and realize I did it wrong, and and even though you may not be able to, you may you may not know where they are. If that did not bug you, you need to get some things right. Because your heart needs to be more your heart needs to be more sensitive than that. 
I know people that can cut you with their words and let you lay in your own blood and not have one bit of conviction about it. Born again and tongue talking. It had nothing to do with well, talking in tongues. I know a lot of people talk in tongues that talk bad. That tells me that the experience didn't bring an inward fix in them. It could have and it should have. They let it become a religious act instead of something that moved them into the place where their heart's like God. I'm preaching a whole lot better than you're nodding out there. Forget, forget saying amen. I mean, just a little nod. I love my Indian brothers, not Native Americans, but the Indians. Uh, different parts of India, same way. Their, their head goes like this. And when you're talking to them, you don't know if they're agreeing or... Or disagreeing, you know. So sometimes, I don't know where you're at. <laughs> Psalm 15. Psalm 15. Oh, I just picked it up in my spirits. It's one of your favorites. I know, I could tell. Well, as I said it, I heard somebody say, yeah, that's my favorite. Uh, Psalm 15. Psalm 15. And, uh, and I'm going to read verse 1 and 2. The heading of this is the character of those who may dwell with the Lord. Now, that's what it is in this Bible. The Bible had a different heading. Verse 1, Lord, who may abide in your tabernacle? Who may abide in your tabernacle? Who may dwell in your holy hill? He who walks uprightly, say walks uprightly, and works righteousness, not talks righteousness, works righteousness, and speaks the truth in his heart. Oh, I'm telling you, well, a little white lies never hurt anybody. It hurts you. God doesn't have colored coat sin. It's either white or black. Amen. Amen. Find a way to say it, but don't lie. Lying is addictive. Once you start it, it's hard to stop it. Who walks uprightly and works righteousness and speaks the truth in his heart? Who who does not backbite with his tongue. The Bible has a lot of things about the tongue. He who doesn't backbite with his tongue, nor does evil to his neighbor. That's not the one that just because he lives next door. It's a, an, another word for neighbors nearby. Who's ever nearby you. Nor does evil to his neighbor, nor does he take up a reproach against his friend. A friend is a friend. This is what this is what it is. Who who the question is who 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 approaches God? The, 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 these are people that that are able to approach God with an open heart. Uh, who abides in, in in your tabernacle? Who may dwell in your holy hill? And notice he said people that dwell there. These are the characteristics of their life. These are characteristics of their life. I've used this and I'll never forget it. Praying right in this pew. This pew's always been this pew. This pew's never been. Well, when we change carpet, they may have got switched around, so I don't know. Uh, but this same position. And uh, I was praying right here when uh, the Lord opened my heart to hear somebody speaking bad about me back there. You know, sometimes we get upset in our mouth. You know, we get a little diarrhea of the mouth. It just kind of runs. You know, I told somebody one time, you'll never have constipation of the mind because you got too much diarrhea of the mouth. <laughs> have I said that one lately? To that side of the oh, to that side of the church. <laughs> and so, but the point is, uh, some people just, just can't control it. They just can't control And justifying it, they justify it. They, I've heard people justify it because they're Irish. I've heard people justify it because, you know, this and that. 
you know, but the truth is it's called flesh. That's what it is. It's called flesh. And so these are the things, this is what he begins to say. So those who approach God and walk in his heel, you know what they don't do? They don't backbite with their tongue. This puts you in a good position. Nor does evil to his neighbor. You bless your neighbor. You bless your neighbor. Matter of fact, the Bible says even bless those who despisefully use you. My brother Mike asked me one day about somebody, uh, if somebody would smack me, what would happen? I got to thinking what he was thinking about, you know? <laughs> Do you, are, you, uh, are you asking for yourself? Or, uh, but uh, I, I told him I was, in, I was in Tulsa, I was at Ramah. And this brother lived in, uh, matter of fact, he was actually from Cincinnati. And we were standing in my department that, I, that me and a couple roommates had. I was standing in the kitchen, in a little doorway. It wasn't a door, it was a doorway. And I said something he didn't like, and he slapped me right across the face. I said, so I, I do know that somebody slapped me one time, and I didn't slap them back. Now, I didn't know I didn't. Maybe it's because... Not because I'm fixed. Maybe I was in such awe and shock that he actually did it and called me a sinner. Yeah, he slapped me and called me a sinner. That's why Brother Hagin would say, uh, God's not the author of confusion. Rhema students are. That's why it's people like that, that that made him create his doctrine. Yeah, it called me a sinner. Slapped me and called me a sinner. I, I, well, Lord help him. Chapter 24. Chapter 24. Chapter 24. Psalm, Psalm yes. Yes. Chapter 24. Verse 1. The earth is the Lord's and all of its fullness, the world and those who dwell therein. For he has founded it upon the seas and established it upon the waters. Who may ascend into the hill of the Lord? Oh, here's questions again. Here's questions again. Who may ascend into the hill of the Lord? And who may stand in his holy place? Now, the Bible talked about let us go up to the, to the let's go up to the Lord. Let's go up to the, to the temple of the Lord. Go up. So uh, if you're in Israel, you, you stand up there up, up on, you know, the Mount of Olivet area or, and uh, you go down the way that leads you to where the Garden of Gethsemane is and you cross the Kidron Valley, uh, you actually ascend up. You ascend up into this. And so who shall ascend up? Who shall go up? Who may ascend to the hill of the Lord? Or who may stand in his holy place? He who has... What? What? And a... Who has not lifted up his soul to idol, to an idol, nor swore deceitfully. He shall receive blessing, empowerment... From the Lord and the righteousness from the God of his salvation. Now that's good preaching right there. That goes right along with what Miss Angel read right there. We shall receive that. Folks, the truth is nothing has the ability to keep you separated from God but you. Paul said nothing's going to separate me. Neither death nor life nor angels nor things present nor things to come. Nothing is going to separate me from the love of God. Nothing. The only person that's got the power to separate you from God is you. And as long as you don't let you get in the way, you can enjoy your life with God like no one else has ever imagined. You just got to make sure you stay submitted. You just got to make sure you keep your heart right. Because you are the only one that can keep you from walking in the true blessing of God. I can't keep you from walking in it, but watch people leave churches. I have people leave here and told me I'm leaving because, because, uh, so-and-so, uh, this and -and so-and-so that Well, so-and-so don't, shouldn't have the power to push you out of where you said God sent you to be. But people do people, people, it's always easier to blame somebody else than that. But you are the only, you are the only person that can keep you from receiving the things that God wants you to have. Amen. Amen. 
So don't blame the preachers, don't blame the deacons, don't blame the elders. Don't even blame your spouse. Unless you're Amy, she can. Uh, uh, don't even blame your spouse. It's only you that can keep you from being everything that God wants you to be. You deal with you, everything else will be easy. You deal with you, deal with the flesh, deal with your emotions, deal with your own desires and watch what happens. Watch how you go to the next level quickly because God's got good things for you. Just don't let you keep, you, keep yourself out. Amen? Amen? You get it? Hallelujah. It's like some man told me a long time ago. Oh, I know what your problem is and I know who your problem is. You shave him every day. You're probably right. And I do, he was right, I do shave every day. Don't like any rough. Shave every day. So you're not, you're not my problem, I'm not your problem. Your spouse is not your problem. Your kids are not your problem. Our only problem is us. Well, you don't know what I go through. Well, I understand, but you've got to learn how to deal with it. You've got to learn how to process it. You've got to learn how to process it through the word of God and through love. Well, you make it sound like it's possible. It is possible. I didn't say easy. I said possible. Amen. If everything was easy, then no one would ever live defeated. It's not all easy. Sure it's, not. it's not all easy. The Mortimers comes. You remember the Mortimers? John and Cindy, Johnny and Cindy, and then John and Helena, the mom and dad. Helena made this statement years and years ago when I first heard the statement, when I did the first time I preached at Shell Lake. The only job you start off on top is when you're digging a hole. Everything else, you work your way up to it. And I'm thinking, so anybody that's become anybody has worked their way to get there. It's not bestowed upon you. Righteousness is. Everything else, you've got to work. Bible says, work your own salvation out. Work it out. There's something you've got to work out with fear and trembling. And that's how you make it. Amen? That's how you make it. All right, praise God. Uh, stand with me. Glory.